Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove, and today my topic is the life force within you. You know, I did a 10 year study of a very unusual man, probably. Uh, the world's greatest psychic. He compared himself, and justifiably so in many ways, to Moses. And I'm talking about Ted Owens, who is the subject of my book, The PK Man. I have in my files today 168 different demonstrations that he produced for scientists of his psychokinetic ability, although frankly sometimes it seemed as if we were talking about precognition and not psychokinesis. Either way, he would send letters to scientists saying, I am going to cause a particular event. It's usually a large scale event, ending a drought, stopping a uh, volcano. Uh, creating tornadoes, uh, uh, influencing the movement of hurricanes, power blackouts, UFO sightings. These are uncommon events. I would say, uh, conservatively speaking, they had a probability of maybe one in a hundred of actually occurring, but roughly two-thirds of the time they worked out for this man. and. On one occasion, and I've talked about it before, uh, he shook me to my bones because he called me up, I think it was Christmas Eve, 1985, and he said, Jeffrey, this is the most important phone call you will ever receive. And he wanted me to warn the U.S. government not to launch the Challenger space shuttle that exploded about three weeks later. And at that point, I thought to myself, I've been ignoring this man for too long. And what I did is I arranged for him to come to San Francisco, where I was living at the time. And with a couple of friends, I took his training program. And that's what I want to address now. Uh, the details are all in my book, The PK Man, and for those of you who really want to dig into it, I actually have the audio files from that training program, and they're available um, to you on the New Thinking Aloud uh, Foundation website. It's uh, called The PK Man Archives. They're in there. But the point I want to make is one of the exercises he gave us in the training program had to do with the life force. The life force is in each and every one of us because we are living beings. We are part of nature. And he said, look at the life force. You can climb to the highest mountains where it's cold and windy and rocky, and you'll see little plants growing in the crevices there. Wherever it's possible, the life force takes root. The life force on this planet started four billion years ago. And as my dear friend Dean Brown once pointed out, the economy has been expanding. Ever since then, for four billion years, life has been growing and evolving and expanding. And creatures are becoming more and more complex, and they somehow always manage to make a living for themselves. If you look at the life force on this planet, no matter how many setbacks there have been, asteroids and comets and uh, all sorts of ecological catastrophes, and we humans are probably the major ecological catastrophe right now, and yet the life force prevails. Many, many species have become extinct, but the life force has prevailed. And I want you to think about that in terms of yourself, in terms perhaps of your unfulfilled dreams, in terms of the failures that you have experienced in your lifetime. You know, Walt Disney, for one, went bankrupt six times, maybe seven. 
Abraham Lincoln, as I recall, went bankrupt a couple of times. I can say for myself, when I count my successes, and there have been many, and I count my failures, the failures greatly outnumber the successes. And that's often how the life force works. It's experimenting, it's exploring. Um, one way to think of it is this way. If anything is worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Because that's how you start. That's the process of experimentation, the process of learning. You learn by doing things poorly and then getting better at them. The life force works that way. One of my artistic heroes, still alive today, Alejandro Jodorowsky. I first saw his movie El Topo back in, I think, about 1970. It was shown only at midnight in theaters, and it was a cult classic. I loved it for decades. If anybody had asked me, what is your favorite movie, I would say it's El Topo. Here was an artistic genius who had managed to combine surrealism in the uh, motif of a country western movie, a cowboy movie, but it was deeply spiritual and yet also quite violent. And, Jodorowsky once wrote that violence and spirituality go together in a funny way. I guess it's because we have to confront the notion of being and non-being, life and death. If you don't deal with these fundamental issues, you're not dealing with reality in its deepest existential sense. I loved Jodorowsky's films, but then he kind of disappeared. I hadn't heard from him or of him or about him for years, for decades, until several years ago, a documentary film was made called Jodorowsky's Dune. And in that documentary, I learned that at the height of his creative powers, he had the funding and the ambition, at least the initial funding, and he acquired the rights to make a movie of the great science fiction novel, Dune. And it was brilliant what he had put together. He had Mick Jagger involved. He had the uh, rock and roll band uh, <laughs> that I loved so much. He had Salvador Dali, uh, Dark Side of the Moon, the Pink Floyd. He had Pink Floyd in, involved in this. He had great graphic artists. And then the project fell apart, and he didn't make another movie for many years. And uh, the documentary talked about Jodorowsky's Dune as the greatest science fiction film never made because the pieces of that project, after it fell apart, other directors picked up his, uh, uh, his ideas and his character in it. It was the inspiration for many other great science fiction movies. But what did Jodorowsky do? He got into illustrated novels, in effect, comic books. And for 30 years, he made uh, illustrated novels. They had a large following in France where he was living, but nothing like the accomplishments one would have expected of a great film director. And now I see, at the age of 85, 86, the poor man <laughs> says every bone in his body is aching, but he's back at it. He's making new movies after a hiatus of, what, 40 years. He's making a comeback, and I'm so glad to see it. And I think he represents the life force to me. He represents what's possible if you're in a dark space, if you're experiencing the uh, frustration that your talents aren't being acknowledged, that you're not uh, receiving the opportunities that you feel you deserve and that you might be able to accomplish. And I can tell you, that's true of the entire discipline of parapsychology to which I've devoted my life. It has yet to achieve its full potential. But I know this, the life force will ultimately prevail, just as it has prevailed for Jodorowsky, and it is now prevailing for him. So, I want to leave you with this thought. How can you reach deeper within yourself? How is the life force working within you? 
How are you going to achieve a comeback in your life? Thank you for being with me. Thank you.